Okay. Well, I'll, tr- I'll trust you on this one. We'll start recording. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> I'll start on the iPad. <laughs> I think I dropped the Exciting, exciting yeah. introduction. <laughs> uh, anyway, think song. I remember I remember dropping that's a signpost up ahead. Your next stop. Dark territory. Ordering in Wonderland, the Twilight Zone review. Hello, citizens. Welcome to LAW Toys and a Review. Review. There we go. Jesus Christ. Uh, episode 130. Uh, episode 102 of the 2019 series. It's getting too many numbers in here, Frank. Uh, Nightmare at 30,000 feet. Another number. I'm Phoenix West. All right, Frank. Time. Excuse me. Frank's over there fiddling with the iPad. He's having technical issues. Uh, I was trying I to cover. Trying to do a queue up uh, Jordan Peele or what? Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm almost there, but just like Jordan Peele and Rod did, they, they played the episode a little bit in the beginning to set up, you know, Jordan Peele's awesome narration. Okay, uh, is that your hint for me to go ahead and just set up the intro? <laughs> exactly. Okay, I'll, I'll take over. So, uh, yeah. So I'm so trying so hard uh, here. We did preface the first one by saying if, this, if you're new to the show, our show, go ahead and watch the episode first because we are not going to hold back here. Not that it sounds like we're that edgy, but we're going to talk about the ending is more what I meant. Uh, so, spoilers. Uh, so, go ahead. This is your chance to tune out and don't come back. No, no. Sorry, sorry. Come back. Oh, shit. It's already too late. They're already gone. Fuck. Fuck it up. Yeah. God damn it. Uh, a- uh, Adam Scott is the star of this episode who I also like. So, we got two episodes in a row starring people I like. Which is uh, enough for me to keep watching, if I were just a casual fan. You know, it was it was cool to put a name, or a face to the whole name. See, he had a great voice. <laughs> he really did. Adam Scott, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not yeah, that. He, he's uh, he's following the long legacy of this episode <laughs> of of Shatner, John Lithgow, and I, did, I think it, did they do this episode in the '80s series or not? I don't remember. Uh, yes. Did they? Yes. I don't think this, the whole 3D thing was available for movie theaters to like uh, the late 70s, like 79, maybe. You know, yeah. I don't know what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> Here's where it just descends into madness. In the 80s TV series. Yes. Did they? <laughs> yeah. Sure? The, the 80s reboot with. Meredith, Burgess, Burgess Meredith. Yeah, but I don't remember the episode though. I'm sure they did. I just don't remember it. Um, yeah, it wasn't <laughs> part at the end where they did um some plane, you know, a few of the plane um crashes that got uh did uh, destroyed and they showed you why, and then it was laying in, in my basement, and then yeah. <laughs> and I know a whole lot of, not a whole lot of, um, um, uh, what was it, the uh, Congressional Medal of Honor were handed out to him for World War II. So, who knows? <laughs> you know, you know. Right. I'm going to pause it right here, Frank. <laughs> what do you think you're talking about there? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. It I feels like an entire dream commentary. in vocals. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, the reason I'm playing this and the reason we're having fun is you haven't done this in a while. But what the fuck are you talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Let's, I, let's continue. I let you talk as much as I could before. I was like a holy mic laughter. I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> let's continue. They sound like the guys around the town. I'm just going to come down here with a shovel and a rake and just break it all. You know, like, yeah. Have you seen my stapler? Have you seen my Milton. Okay, Frank, we are going to... Hey, man, it's oh, building on fire. I cannot bring up video for some reason, dude. That's it all right. Not doing it. I think we're going to save this. We're going to hold off. 
I am so preoccupied with trying a video on here, I don't understand it. And I can only play it through Amazon Prime because of my subscription. And, dude, I'm hitting video, and it keeps bringing me to... This is, this is infuriating. I, I just want to say, uh, so let's let's pick up where we left off here. Let's let's record some other night because you just spoke for about two solid minutes and it was nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah, I think it was about my exploits of trying to get your ex what this point of trying to get to the video exploits ex exploits. exploits. I thought you said ex boy toys. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? I was going through my exploits of trying to get through this uh, episode. Okay. I remember the exploits. Didn't they tour with Black Flag back in the 80s? Pretty good. Uh, yeah, they were, they were great. 48 seconds left. All right. I want to stop now. In, at least in my head, that's what I was trying to do. Was I close? No. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to save this audio. <laughs> So you can hear it later. I would love like to hear it too because I am. I I'm, I'm so oblivious to what I'm I'm saying or how I'm saying it. You weren't saying. You were you were literally going like this. <laughs> and that's what I heard. Uh yeah. Um, play it. All right, I'm gonna stop it right now. So long, <laughs> citizens. <laughs> I was like, I was being defiant. Like, oh yeah, play it. <laughs> Hold on, it's all right. It's just not, not tonight, not tonight. All right, so that's the clip. I, dude, I remember that because you were like, not tonight, and then we just kind of ended it. And like afterwards, I was just like, you sobered I, right up after. There's no way a human being could ever transcribe that. It's just, it's not, not, it's not I, happening. So it's like, I have no fucking idea. Dude, I said it, and I don't even know what I said. <laughs> I couldn't tell. Yeah. You were speaking was, in tongues, Frank. You were speaking in tongues so bad, I went, I wasn't mad. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? And I was like, all right, I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> like, uh, to be honest with you, I, I, I remember that day. That was the first, um, uh, that was the f um yeah, that was the first time I ever went to uh, a therapist for what I was going through at the time mentally. And uh Don't bring us down. And, and well, I'm just saying therapy can either help you or make things worse. And for me, it's the last time I really saw one. <laughs> Because it made it one, one of the reasons why I quit drinking was because uh, people would show me texts the next day or something that I posted in a forum somewhere because that's what we had before Facebook was a thing. And it would just be like 12 pages of diatribe of just me like rambling on incoherently about like science fiction and life and conspiracy and, theories on MySpace. Yeah, conspiracy theories and whatever the fuck else would come up. <laughs> I think I had MySpace for about a week, and they're like, "Well, you need to go over to Facebook because that's where all the cool kids are hanging out." And I'm like, "What the fuck ever? It'll be something next week." And then that that next week never came. So, but yeah, I did quit drinking because of that. So, hey, I quit what? drinking for a different reason. I just you you're drinking right now. You know, couldn't I couldn't deal with life to life with drinking, and um, you couldn't find a glass last week, so you were chugging out of the goddamn bottle. <laughs> You weren't here last week, but the point is that I was rocking it while I was working. Life is complicated, and you don't need to drink to get through it. And no, um, just quit but drinking. It, if you but can. it helps, you know. <laughs> I'm kidding. I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, this episode's okay at best. It's a, it's a. I'll forget this episode um, until I need to make a worst and best of this season. Um, type of episode. It could be that I was so deflated by you know Probe Seven and uh, you know the other fucking Seven, which the is other Seven. Yeah, the Phantom Seven, and then this came along. And I was like, well, this is definitely better than the first two. So now that my expectations are Let's here, try. Let's yeah. try going off piggybacking off you, Adam. Last episode was a short drink from a certain fountain. Or sorry, this is today. Last yeah. episode was uh, Seventh is Made Up of Phantoms. Yes. What was the name of the previous episode? Probe also, Seven. Over and out. Damn Probe it. Seven over and out. Yep. Easier than I thought. Okay, I thought we'd have to struggle. 
Yeah, no, Frank, no. It, it's probably or probably both written on the same napkin, and it might be a transcription <laughs> of what Frank just said in that previous. He has episode. a giant number seven and two titles written through it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Pro seven over now. Seven's been phantoms. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. It's so, Frank. So you were going to ask me something. You what? Were, you, you, I think you were about to say uh, Frank, and then uh, were you about to ask me a question? No, I was gonna say, uh, your Frank's rambling to, through it uh, through the napkin. And he, there's someone writer, some writer at uh, CBS is like, okay, they made a phantom. What? So they hear, uh, uh, they oh, from? whatever. It's sci fi. The kids love they, this shit anyway. Yeah, ah, the fuck it. They hear that guy. It'll be all right. It'll be a, fine. On yeah. a horse, and they fuck around with it, and they fucking go back in the past. Sci fi, spooky, spooky. What are you gonna do? You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's it has to be what happens. Spooky, spooky. Yeah. I don't know. That's what I got. My point is how two things I want to get to really bad in this episode, which are more important than everything else in this episode. Number one, she when she hears from her brother or his brother, you have to raise this child, take care of him, and blah blah blah. I go, she can just walk the fuck away and be fine. Go find some other rich guy. You don't have to take care of a fucking child the rest of your life. Yeah, right? and then and then it'll backfire on his brother because then who's left? His brother. But she didn't want to leave her stuff because he told her, if you walk out that door, you walk out with what you came in with. Yeah, she can wait till he leaves the fucking room and then put all her shit in some... I'm pretty sure he's not going to leave the room. This guy has been planning this shit. He, he's, he was ready to throw his brother over the fucking balcony, metaphorically speaking, just to get even with this bitch. He wasn't leaving that Go room. grab a gun and a suitcase. Stuff that suitcase full. Be like, I'm taking this shit. What are you going to do? Die for this? Fuck you. I'll kill you and then baby brother. And then I'm fine. But she could have walked the fuck away from there. Which is option A. Or B. She raises this child. The child, which is either Dr. Jackass or Mr. Hyde from reality. Whatever you want to consider him. The older brother who turned into a child has to watch his previous ex-wife fuck a dozen dudes a week in this apartment. Why is that better for him? How is that an insult to her? She has to, He has to watch her fuck so many dudes now. I'm sure that's kind of what's been going on for a while anyway. Maybe he likes to watch. They never really now established he has that. To watch. He, he can't participate. He can't fucking jerk off in the closet like some weird, you know, cuckolding porn. He has to, he has to watch with a little flaccid little eight-year-old dick. And they can't do shit with. What's he gonna do? <clears throat> That's misery. When you're an eight year old with an erection, it's fucking misery. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. I feel like horror movies that we've seen started off with this concept. Halloween, all of them, fucking every single one of them. It's, it's usually some little kid watching his mom fuck everybody that that walks or crawls, and then as soon as people start fucking, out come the the red hot pokers and the machetes and chainsaws and whatever the fuck else you can think of. Yep. Yes. That's how Michael Myers' sister got killed. He's like, she's like nude in front of the mirror. Like, oh, they're pretty. Michael! Like, fuck you for being a titty monster. Making me oh. can't even jerk off right Yeah, I'm too young. You know, you know what my favorite, one of my favorite parts of that movie is, is when the dude walks downstairs, she's like, are you going to call me? And he just kind of looks up slowly. It's like, yeah, whatever. And just walks out. I'm like, that's funny for even like, what was that supposed to be like? 1950s, 1960s when that happened? Shit just made me laugh. Unintentional laughter. Yeah. 50s, right? Because it was like 19, what movie year that come out? 76? Yeah, 70, 77. I believe. Oh, let me double check on that. No, it wasn't 76. I think it was 77. No, yeah, okay. maybe it wasn't 70. 79, I'm going to say. 81. 86. Fuck you, Frank. 81's a sequel. Oh, <laughs> see, it's 78. It's 1978. and 81, right? Yep. Okay, so she was born in 1950, blah, 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 blah. That's when he killed her. 20 years older, right? 20 years earlier? Mm-hmm. Eh. Eh. Yeah. It, it, it tracks. Kill bitch once in a while. That's all I'm saying, Frank. It, it tracks, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. How many girlfriends did he be killed, Frank? Six, seven? Um, that I can remember. But there's probably yeah. more. Some of your fucking like you're you don't even remember because they don't fucking matter. 
If you get a girl that like complains about the, the macaroni being too hot, you're like, ah, and then you cut yourself. You cut later to you in the desert, bearing a bitch. It happens. That I mean, and that's why I always rename my girlfriends. So that way you don't know who the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> that's the true fact. Frank renamed his wife. Adam, Sorry. true story. He renamed his wife. Yep. Her name's that's not how, That's how terrible he is as a person. Mm -hmm. See, this, the truth comes out. And she got back at him in a, deep inside a Holiday Inn, room 214. <laughs> she got deep inside him. 214. <laughs> and just like, you know, pulverized his insides like Michael Myers uh, to his older sister. No, he hit like me spot like a pro, son. <laughs> like a pro. I've never had a girl find my... Uh, a prostate. I've never had that. Well, you need a wand where it hooks. Never mind. Yeah, I, I don't know what I need, but I'll know I'll never buy it. So it's never <laughs> happened and probably never will. <laughs> so it needs like some sort of marital aid. I know I'm not going to find. When you're when you're together with the same chick for twenty years, you know you're very comfortable with each other. <laughs> I get it. You know what I mean? And and that's when the fun starts. I'll let you know in 19 years. Well, Phoenix, I can't wait till you and your girl visit a Hampton in one of these days. I can't wait to hear this. Just the good news is we're on the fast track. You know, the fast track. I feel like we're going to be there in like six months. So awesome. we're good. Dude. I'll let you know when we find it. You so so the question for you, Frank, is do you have a clip of Phoenix going off the deep end like you did, like he played earlier, so you can play it at his wedding? I do. Yeah, it's called season one without me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. No, I have a me on Frank show with um us and that weird fucking conspiratorial guy in the iPad on the couch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. way off topic radio, and yeah. it, it, Miles Hendricks. Miles Hendricks is on the couch and an iPad. And they're talking about him working for Pink Floyd and some shit. And I was like, cool, cool. I'm going to go vomit outside. And I ran outside and I vomited. And I came back and I was like, got to go, guys. Bye. And that was I was the drunkest I've been in a long time. Yeah. And, and dude, this guy literally said how this is the last time he's ever using social media or anything. And he's going off the grid because fuck everything. And motherfucker bounced. Go He'll be back next week. Not no. I have never seen that guy since, and that was three years ago. And uh, yeah, I haven't. Oh, cool. Um, Good for him. Maybe he joined a commune or something, or he works on a share as a sharecropper on a no, farm. No, fucking yeah. boozy McMoney tits. It's crazy. He's fucking her like crazy, and and raising a baby, her ex husband baby. Kudos to uh, where the fuck you said his name was. I already forgot. I just remember that because I'll never forget that. That was one of the weirdest nights of my life, and I, and it wasn't counting me throwing up in my own dog shit, like the dog shit out there in the rocks, and I sh I threw up on top of their shit, and that doesn't count that part. Everything before that was crazy as shit. Oh yeah, it, but I mean, like, did 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 you ever end up listening to the rest of that show? Like, no, because I was embarrassed, and uh, I don't get embarrassed often. But that was one of them where I was like, "Oh, I was just like, uh, I, was just, I gotta go." <laughs> I assume I sound like that. You you but, were fucked up, dude. You yeah. were so drunk. I was fucked no, up. I'm I not perfect. I, I I was recording one back in 2010 Star Wars podcast, and a couple mm -hmm. people went out for a break, and I was just sitting there waiting, and I, I guess I passed out, and I was snoring rather loudly, and they recorded all of it, and people were like whispering dirty things into my ears and they, they kept all that audio so that's out there on the net somewhere it's going to come back and haunt me later i'm sure you see they're not real friends like you know at least phoenix no i guess i don't have any real friends because everybody's got something everybody's got some kind of fucking dirt on me so yeah but i wouldn't air it though like well we did we we used to that's back we used to record them and then just upload them later to itunes like you guys used to yeah, like, i asked him permission to play that clip first yep yeah. it's cool like I mean, you know, you know, like 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 Scott, like the like the one, you know, the last time Phoenix was on my show with with Scott and all. Like I never aired that to anybody. There's only a few people that's ever heard that. I heard it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I aired after the awkwardness. What? I aired it after the argument. I. You know what? I found it too. 
Uh, yeah, I saw that. I'm like, oh. So what you do is you save that for the wedding day, and you, you play it, that in, in lieu of a wedding speech. It, it was a really great podcast after everything went down. You know, it, it really was. And, but Let's not go down that road. I'm just saying. No, you're right, though. It was it was not a bad podcast, but it took a fucking while to get there. Mm. But, um, yeah, let's um, – any closing thoughts? About, oh, real quick, before we go, before we do our plugs. Oh, yeah, I, have, I have the outro. Real quick, before the outro. Okay. How do you think this episode ended with with uh, Boozy McMoney Tits and the baby, or the six-year-old, <laughs> whatever the fuck he was? How do you think this played out after we saw the credits? Okay. Adam? I think they all jumped in a Jeep and drove off into the sunset, and she raised him somewhere in uh, either Arizona or New Mexico. Frank? You, you know what? Uh, kudos, Adam. I like it. Was That's great. quick. Yeah, I like the man. Um, okay, so this is what I... Now, I remember when I was like 10, 11, 12, and 13, and 14, that like <laughs> I was just fucking everything. So, couch. Couch. oh, the couch, the couch was my bitch. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> so, true. but instead he's got her now, whether she's a willing participant or not, I guarantee you, uh, either she's basically a willing pedophile. Oh, husband. Oh, or... hear him out, Adam. Frank, continue. <laughs> huh? What happened? Frank, continue. Adam. Open your mind, Frank. Go. Okay. Or, you know, um, or basically, a ten-year-old is is raping a. I guess it would be a forty-eight-year-old woman. Okay. That's how I see that playing out. That's part one. But how do you see that ending? Oh, the ending. Yeah. Um, how do you see this entire story playing out? Um, her dying, him being in the prime of his life, and uh, cash in on that insurance. Okay. Living like a king. And just letting him go? Letting her go. Well, he can't cash in on, the, on that, but she would. No, no, no. He's young and she's old. Okay. So, Adam, how does yours play out long term? Well, suppose he's the pedophile, because obviously when he gets old enough to, to stick it where the sun doesn't shine, he's going to want uh, young, he likes the younger women, so um, is he going to go uh, below state law or what's allowed, or kind of makes you wonder. I don't, I don't, partic- I don't see him ever uh, doinking anybody his own age. No, because by the time she dies and he's the age that he is, He'll just get a younger woman, but it'll still be legal. He's going to find another sugar mama, and the cycle's going to start all over again. As far as we know, this might be the third time this has happened. He won't ever need a sugar mama because, you know, he's rich. Insurance, you know? It's just like Battlestar Galactica. All this has happened before, and all all that will happen again. I agree with Adam. This is a continuous cycle. How many episodes have we talked about, Frank, where I consider this might be like continuously happening? Well, like, um, but I think this round, considering what I've seen, she's going to raise him for about three weeks, uh, realize she can't get her hole filled enough, and then smother this little son bitch with a pillow. Because otherwise, he's watching her fuck seven dudes a week. And, and claim said. And what? She'll claim said. She'll she'll claim he's way too old for SIDS, but she'll claim something. She'll claim he just stopped breathing in my mind. Oh, 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 that sort of thing. And then, then she'll bring in the brother and be like, he died. I don't know what to do. And he'll be like, I know you killed her, you you bitch, you boozy oh. McMoney tits bitch. And she'll be like, Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me oh 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 fill out that paperwork and he's filling oh, oh. out. She's like, I signed it over to you. And she's like, oh, oh, bomb, and blows his brains out. And that's where that fucking ends. She has a signature. That's all she needed. <laughs> and then she just goes off to, like, Fiji or somewhere weird and lives out the rest of her days fucking rich old dudes. She doesn't need to, but she still fucking does because she's a sleazebag. She's make money tits. And she just does whatever the fuck she wants to do. She just, like, snorts some weird green shit. <laughs> oh, I'm in El Salvador. I'm doing some weird blow. 
And that's what she does with the rest of her days. It is a fucking blur. She remembers nothing. And she ODs like Sharon Stone and Heat Era Casino. And just went down a hallway. Uh, just falls over dead. That's what happens to her. I like that ending too. Wow. Wow, Phoenix. <laughs> Good God, dude. The, the, that was a... Uh... I'm kind of pissed now. You put way more thought into it than I did. Now I feel like shit. So you know, what I, put into this? I could not come up with that scenario of anything ever, just off of a, the whim of an improv. That congratulate. That's why he's the Adam, improv man, and I'm another, not. Well, especially Adam, considering all I've written down is Adam. Another round of applause. All I have written down is she doesn't have to raise this asshole. That's where, as far as I went with my notes, I just, <laughs> that's where I, my brain went with this, with this ending, based off of your guys' responses, and that's where I think this should go. Her dying alone and afraid in a hallway. So you I stood up, and the blood rushed to your head, and just all this shit just popped in there all at once. That's gotcha. my life. Okay. That's my life. That's why I do this show. Snorting when Frank before he joined the show, show. <laughs> this is all this shit was before Frank joined. In, in Ecuador. <laughs> Snorting some ec- ec- Ecuadorian ectoplasm. How about it, Frank? Some, some green shit. Y- yeah, the, some weird green shit. Snorting Ecuadorian some- ectoplasm. <laughs> well, part of it is I just watched it. I just watched uh, uh, my favorite one of my favorite bands, No Effects. They a series called uh, uh, some passport, something passport. Where the fuck is it? This is when I think of real it's things. Called- I can't use the words. It- it, Backstage passport, but they snorted green shit in like some country where you're not allowed to do drugs. It's it's uh, death penalty if you use drugs. They snorted like a green line, and that's what I. That's all I used. <laughs> the rest is just what I think should happen. You know what it was? It was that that green chlorophyll shit from Troll Two. That's what they were snorting. It must have been probably that. Oh stuff. my god! Oh my god! And, god. and Robert De Niro's like, you fucking bitch, you fucking whore. <laughs> and that's where he died. More, more blueberries, and that's all he said. And, she and Joe Pesci comes and says, "You fucking prick, you! You, <sighs> you, you motherfucker, you! You, you motherfucker, you! You, you motherfucker, you!" I love when he says that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you think, walking like around like Lionel Walton. Barrymore with your fucking bathroom. <laughs> oh, I think we're done here, right? Outro. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Outro. Plug first. I'll grow a little bit older each day, like any little boy. And you'll perform the process together. As he grows older, you'll be growing old. Now, there's a little poetic justice, Flora, that you should be forced to drink from the same cup. And then when tomorrow comes, there'll be someone younger outside, waiting to come in. Always waiting to come in. But it isn't fair, Raymond. It just isn't fair. Everything, everything is on his side. Well, you see, Flora, as you get older, see how wise you get? It happens to be a fact. As one gets older, one does get wiser. If you don't believe it, ask Flora. Ask her any day of the ensuing weeks of her life, as she takes notes during the coming years and realizes that the worm has turned. Youth has taken over. It's simply the way the calendar crumples in the twilight zone. Boom. Did, did, he, did he say is this the way the calendar crumbles? He did. I don't know what that means. I don't know either because Zikri did not say calendar crumbles. This is the same guy that was scribbling the number seven on a cocktail napkin. You're asking these questions? I, I think we already Shall know the I answers. Read? Was yeah. Zickery thought about this episode? I suppose. It's two and a half. Hold on, one. Yeah, it's two paragraphs. Okay, it's shorter. And we read from the... And now the reading of Zickery. <laughs> and now I shall read from the book of Zickery. Uh, page 375. Psalm 69. Psalm 63. 12, 13, 63. Desperate to keep up with his gold digger wife, wealthy Harmon Gordon begs the doctor, his doctor brother to inject him with a highly experimental use serum, not a semen. Initially, the doctor refuses, but when Harmon threatens suicide, he reluctantly agrees. At first, the serum effects seem miraculous. Harmon is restored to vigorous young manhood. 
I also feel the same way after my brother's uh, serum is injected into me. But the formula continues to work. Same here. And Harmon <laughs> regresses to an, into an infant. As the wife starts to walk out, Harmon's brother makes a threat to compel her to stay. Raise Harmon to, to adulthood, staying with him every minute or be cut off without a penny. So apparently he has that godlike power. Last paragraph. I, I have to read something for you, Frank, here in a second. But last paragraph. Poetic justice of a sort is served at the end of a short drink from a certain fountain, but it would be more satisfying if it were not for the unrecognizable realization that a helpless child is being left entirely at the mercy of someone who is an unfit wife and will almost certainly be an unfit mother. For reasons which are entirely, uh, which are in cloudy at this state, sorry. This is one four half hour episodes which are not in syndication. Considering its wordiness and predictability, however, that is no great loss. Agreed. Oh, uh, and yeah, it does say calendar crumbled. Yeah. Last paragraph or last sentence. The way the calendar crumbles in the Twilight Zone. Yep. Even Zickory was aware of that stupid last line about the calendar crumbling. Yeah, because normally Zickory writes the entire ending, but he just left that. <laughs> Shall I? What did we all learn? Normally, Frank, I do this when you're not here. But Adam, Frank, what did we learn from today's episode of The Twilight Zone as we finish up? Not to marry a trophy wife. Frank. <clears throat> Um, don't ask your brother to inject yourself with uh, youth serum. Damn, that's how it goes. Give me mine. <laughs> Let me say that instead. Don't ask your brother to inject you with his hot spermy uh, youth serum and then be surprised when it doesn't go out right. Because he's like, I'm growing younger. And he does this to insinuate chaotic aging or de aging. Yeah, he bends over. Do. He bends over like he's got to take a shit. He does. But, like, what What the fuck? This episode isn't good. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's bad, though. But it makes me wish season four was still going, which is fucking surprising, because season five sucks compared to season four. Well, I mean, Ed Wynn is... Well, hold on. I'm sorry. Um, but you have something to look forward to next week, Phoenix. You know what that is? I do. Uh, 90 years old at Slumbering. I am a dwarf that joins the ranks of the elves and gremlins who supply the imaginative material on the Twilight Zone. His name is Richard DeRoy, and his story is in the best tradition of the program. It stars one of the gentlest and certainly the most able of America's actors, a beloved little fixture on the American scene named Ed Wynn. Next time out on the Twilight Zone, Ed Wynn stars in 90 Years Without Slumbering. Yep. 90 Years Without Slumbering is next week. As well as Ring-A-Ding Girl. Ring-A-Ding. Another back-to-back -back episode of Twilight Zone next week. Ring-A-Ding. We're, we're way the fuck ahead of schedule on Tales from the Crypt, so we're going to put it off for a while <laughs> until we catch up. I, I don't but, think... It, yeah, like, Have you released one that uh, Adam and I have done yet? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we did. I'm sorry. I... I'm no, it's fine. It's fine if you don't give a shit. It's fine. Well, at least I'm subscribed. Frank, it's fine if you don't give a, a single shit about your own show that you're on. I do. No, it's cool. But cool, you don't give a single shit about the show. But let's continue. Can we? Please, can you stop obsessing over it? Sure. You good. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna move on with Frank Tears and all. We're gonna move on to just say, Adam, where can we find you? You can find me at www.raidersoflostflicks.com. Check me out on YouTube every Friday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We review and watch bad movies together. That's what Frank. I do. Frank, where can we find you? Oh, I sleep in the driveway. Oh, I'm at LAW Studios. That... Oh, sorry, Frank. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm good. I just need... <laughs> Go ahead. I'm just fucking with you. No, no. I, I, I... You can also find... <laughs> Continue, Frank. <laughs> asleep in my driveway. You, what? <laughs> you can find me asleep in my driveway. Phoenix? <laughs> 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 it, 
<laughs> oh god <laughs> i'm gonna lose my channel <laughs> what continue <clears throat> devil l nkz on twitter and in the uh, red dragons radio.com everybody lawcs.com uh loading at wonderland at gmail.com loading wonderland on youtube <sighs> oh, boozy mchousewife thank you i love you in this episode um big daddy what big daddy oh sorry just came both hands see me um i agree <laughs> no that's not me don't do that adam you had to clear some out of your eye adam okay so i got sorry i shot adam in the eye with it but um <laughs> lwcs.com lloyd digging one land whatever the fuck you are but yeah thanks guys for joining us we, me, who are the fuck? I don't know what the fuck we're doing anymore. We're doing two different shows at once, and it's confusing me. But this episode sucked. It's not great. It's not bad. The ep last episode was fucking terrible. I gave this a tier two level. Do you guys did, agree? Did you change your rating system? Tier one, tier two, two, three. I told you about that a while ago. Oh, you're right. I'm still I'm, learning your radio ra uh, uh, rating system, so I'm just going with the the one out of ten thing because I don't want to bring cheese curds into it because that's my own rating scale, not part of your show. So seven out of ten for me. Wow, that's that's tier one. Mm -hmm. Frank, I I give this uh, two out of five Don Megas. Frank, <laughs> what? Can you give a human rating system at all? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Out of ten. Oh, oh okay. So um, four. All right, all right. Uh, you're right. Uh, I, I give it six and a half dicks on megas out of ten. Out of, so out you're of, you're out the same spot I am. Where you? I give it a five though, but I give it a I give it a tier th tier two. All right, sorry, I give it a six. I give it a tier two. The last episode I gave it a four. I give it a tier one. This episode, okay. Okay, so I give it a tier two. Tier two is tier one, great, no complaints really. Um, satisfies my Twilight Zone itch. Tier two, okay, have some complaints, but whatever, it's fine. Tier three is oh, that was rough to get through, which yeah. is our last episode, right, Adam? Yeah. So that's my that's my rating system as of now. I'm going off the Tom Elliott version with just tier three, one, one, two, three. That's all I'm doing now. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. That way, at the end, I have them all categorized. Because, like, a lot of times, it the worse the try zone is, the more funny content we could have for it. But this is true. But this sometimes true. they're so bad, there's just nothing you can do, and it's not doesn't even provide you with funny content because you're just so mad. That was the uh, the phantoms. That was all for me. Four. That's why it took us a year to get through sixteen episodes. <laughs> well, we'll think about it like this. Uh, the last episode, which you think would be full of jokes and whimsy, was an forty minutes, fifty minutes. This episode, which was okay, hour fifty four right now. Yeah. So. Oh shit! I gotta get back to work. Exactly. So, All right, until next time, in the meantime, I'm Phoenix West. I'm Adam Wilcox. I'm Frank Lynx, third now. I guess I guess he's third now. You know what? I deserve to be third <laughs> because, you know, it's his channel. I was a sweet Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right, Adam. Adam, yeah. if he's on your third, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> no, no. You, want, you want to do it over again so you no, feel better? Don't do it over. Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Not doing her. Until, I her to be third. Uh, yeah. Until next time. In the meantime, I'm Phoenix West. Oh, this is awkward. I'm Frank Lynx. <laughs> and I'm Adam Wilcox. So long, citizens. Now it's that all better weird. now. <laughs> I'll sound like the same voice. That was bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> so long, citizens. Nice. Toodles. Uh, Later, peoples. Dainty pinky wave. <laughs>